In this part, let's take a closer look at the game developer inside of us and use the scene view to modify our game. So in the scene view, I can just simply click on items to select them. You can also select them on the left here, which is called the hierarchy view, and the hierarchy view lists all of the objects that are in the game. So I can select them and they will get selected in the scene view. Now here's a handy feature. Let's select these cardboard boxes here. And as soon as I hit the F key while my mouse is hovering over the scene view, it will put the box in focus. So I'm going to do that right now. And as you can see, the camera zooms in. I can zoom in and out using the scroll bar. And if I zoom all the way out so far that I can't really see 3D space anymore and I'm lost, I can always go back by hitting the F key and it will focus on my current selection. If you don't have anything selected, you can of course go back and select something in the hierarchy view and hit the F key in case you got lost. Okay, now what else can I do? I can hit the Alt key on my keyboard and then click and drag the mouse and this will make me maneuver around a 3D object. In this case the cardboard boxes because it's the last thing we focused on. Now in case I don't want to really uh, focus on cardboard boxes but move around in 3D space, I can just use my cursor keys like the back, front, left and right to move around in 3D space like you would expect in a video game except the camera is floating. Also what is very noticeable is those four boxes up here on the left and you'll come to use those a lot. The hand symbol allows us to go up and down and look at things in 3D space. The move symbol allows us to move objects which we'll get to in a second. The rotate option allows us to rotate objects and the scale button allows us to scale objects up and down. So if I scale here in the middle it will scale the entire group of boxes up and down. We can undo this with command Z on Mac or control Z on Windows. Now any selected object will show its properties on the right here which is called the inspector. So for example if I look really closely at these cardboard boxes you can see that there's a texture of cardboard on the boxes and this texture is also displayed here in the inspector of my currently selected object. So all the properties of these boxes is editable here on the right. These are called components and I can add extra component if I would like. So let's zoom out just a little bit here. I've already mentioned that everything in the game is an object because Unity uses an object oriented approach for their game. So everything you see or don't see is an object. Lights are an object, the lockers are an object, these are all objects. Okay, what I could do is create a new game object as well. Go to the left where it says game object, then create other and then click cube. This will create a cube in 3D space. However, it's a little bit hidden behind the boxes right now as you can see when I rotate around. So I'm going to go back to the move tool and move the cube out of there. Now it's a little bit hard to see so I'm going to hit the F key again to focus on it. As you can see the lights are already impacting the box, there's nothing I needed to do about it. But as soon as I go into the game view and hit play, you'll see that the box is standing in my way. This is not particularly what we want because a floating box is actually a little weird. So what we're going to do is make the box a little bit smaller. So let's go to our scale tool here and click the middle and scale it down just a bit. And as you can see, the scale here on the right in the inspector is changing as I drag my mouse. If I wanted to, I could also type in a custom scale myself. So if I put 10 here, you can see that it gets wider or 0.3, it goes back to normal or I just hit escape and cancel what I just did. Also the rotation is mentioned here and the position of the cube. Now we'll get into 3D axes a little bit later but right now what we want to do is move the cube up towards the ceiling. Next what we want to do is we want to apply physics to it. I'm just going to hit F to focus on it and zoom out just a little bit, move it even closer and then I'm going to hit the rotation tool and rotate the cube around a bit so that it's tilted. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is add physics to it. So I'm going to go to uh, component and then physics. And this allows us to add all kinds of physics to it. So in this case a rigid body means something that is rigid but still bounces. 
So I'm going to click that. An additional way to add the rigid body is by going to actually add component and it will add, allow us to do the same by going to physics and then selecting rigid body. However, we've already added it. As you can see, the rigid body is right here. Now, it allows us to do all kinds of professor stuff and add the mass and make the box heavier or what kind of drag it has, but we'll just leave this to the defaults right now. Now, as soon as I hit the play button, you'll see what happens. The cube falls from the sky and it's laying right in front of my feet. If I actually kick the cube, you can see it uh, toggles around a little bit. It's pretty small, so I can't look down that far, but that's pretty much how physics work. So you may go, wait a minute, Ephraim, physics just work right out of the bat and I don't have to actually code it myself. That's right, we leave the physics to the people that have books for friends. That way we can make games and be social with our computers. Moving on, let's move another box in here and say edit, duplicate, and this duplicated the uh, actual box. And I'm just going to move this one up right on top of it. And I'm also going to move both of these boxes away from the player a little bit so we can see it better. Now if I hit play, you can see both boxes actually collide on top of each other. They sort of try to stack up and then tumble off. So you can see all these physics have a live effect on each other. And there's really absolutely nothing we needed to do other than, you know, adding a rigid body. Now let's make this a little bit more fun and go pick up that Beretta of ours. Here we go. And we've coded the gun in such a way that if you shoot, it adds a little bit of physics force to the object that receives it. So as you can see, the boxes respond to it. Now if I made the mass of the box a little bit smaller, it would actually uh, tumble over. So you can do all kinds of fun stuff like this. All right, so now you know what game objects are. There are every object in the game, and you know how to add physics to uh, boxes. Now, okay, this is a start. We'll get there. We'll do some more fun stuff. So continue on to the next video, and um, we'll continue on from there.